Today, let us take some time to study the Word of God with a sermon titled, The Miracle of the Five Loaves of Bread and Two Fish. God gives us much grace and blessing through the Passover. Let us study the meaning of the Passover in the Bible. Especially, the Bible records many miracles that God performed through bread. Through the miracle known as the five loaves of bread and two fish, Jesus fed 5,000 people with five barley loaves and two fish. While the Israelites were wandering in the desert, God performed another miracle by providing them with manna. He saved all the Israelites from hunger in this way. Furthermore, Regarding the Passover, what can we see in it? We can see bread. Doesn't the bread appear together with the wine in the Passover ceremony? God also breathed a miracle into the bread. There is a miracle in the history of the five loaves of bread and two fish. There is a miracle in the desert with manna. Moreover, God breathes a miracle into the Passover bread and wine. The miracle He breathes into them is the miracle of eternal life. This time, let us take some time to study God's will through the history of the five loaves of bread and two fish through the book of John chapter 6. Let us turn to the book of John chapter 6. Let's take a look at the book of John chapter 6 verse 4. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Among so many, how many people can truly be satisfied? Simply put, that is what Andrew meant. However, Jesus had them bring him the bread. After giving thanks, he said, divide and distribute it. And how many people ate it? Wasn't it enough even after 5,000 people ate? The Bible records, they gathered them and filled 12 baskets. There is something very important in this scene. What do you think it is? What we must pay attention to here is that we need to distinguish between what God can do and what we can do. Let us think about an English expression first. There is an expression, as much as. It means the degree of what we do. When we add I can to as much as, it means the level of what I can do. Next, let us add you can to as much as, as much as you can. Then, let us put God in the place of I and you. It is as much as God can. We should think carefully about the scene in the book of John chapter 6. What was it that people could do in the miracle of the five loaves and two fish? Do we have the ability to feed 5,000 people? In this situation, there is nothing either you or I can do other than tell Jesus, there is a child who has five barley loaves and two fish. 
There was no one among those gathered who could satisfy those who were hungry, not a single one. However, what happened when I and you were omitted and then God was added? An amazing work happened when the 12 baskets overflowed even after the people ate their fill. Everyone, today's title is the miracle of the five loaves of bread and two fish. In the midst of miracles, there is a distinction between what we can do and what God can do. We constantly think of what we can do, saying that we always depend on God. Everyone, we are not the only one who works for the gospel, but who else is working? In the book of John chapter 5 or 17, what does it say? My father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. There are those who think about what God can do, and those who only think about what they can do. One of the examples was when the Israelites explored and conquered Jericho. Out of the 12 spies, 10 only looked at what they could do. However, Joshua and Caleb were different. They looked at what God could do. God is helping us. But if we start with the mindset that this is not possible, all the doors will be closed from that moment on. When will God open the door to help us? When we have faith, everything will be open for us. So, what do the eyes of hesitation always see? They only see obstacles. What do the eyes of faith see? They always see the way. When we hesitate and doubt, we will always see obstacles that are in our paths and say, because of this, we can't do it. And because of that, we can't do it. However, from the moment we have the eyes of faith, everything will be done smoothly. Now, we are in the final stage of the gospel being preached in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. While carrying out the gospel, some churches only set the goal of what they can do, whereas some churches set their goal to what God can do. Therefore, God said in Matthew chapter 9, according to your faith, let it be done to you. Didn't he? Like Joshua and Caleb, we must be the ones who absolutely believe that God can do anything and take action. Everyone, was there a way in the Red Sea or not? There was no way. With their eyes of doubt and hesitation, they only saw obstacles. How can the 600,000 men, along with their wives, children, herds, and flocks, cross this vast sea and go to that side? No matter how much we think, Everything is an obstacle when we look at it with doubt. However, when we look at it with faith in God, doesn't He reveal that there is a way? Stretch out your staff over the sea. Absolutely believing the fact God is leading us. Since God promised the land of Canaan, He will surely lead us. Moses stretched out his staff over the Red Sea. Then a path that had been invisible until that moment was revealed. Everyone, this is our God. Through the miracle of the five loaves of bread and two fish, what could they do? There was nothing they could do. They only looked to Jesus. When he told them to feed 5,000 people, they were startled and said, how can we feed 5,000 people with only five barley loaves and two fish? How many people can be satisfied with this? All the disciples only thought this way. That is why Jesus himself showed this miracle to them. He showed them how much God could do.
He showed them a small fraction of what He could do. When as much as God can was put in the situation, all 5,000 people were satisfied and the five barley loaves ended up filling 12 baskets and overflowed. When God does it, He breaks our physical thoughts and concepts in the physical world. Who is always with us in this gospel? Since God says, I will be with you always to the very end of the age, we must not exclude the ability of God who is with us and must not set our goals according to what we can do. We should have faith like, if God works on this, it can be finished in a month. It can be accomplished in a week or even in a day. Only when we have this kind of faith, if God says, according to your faith, will it be done? Won't this world be completely transformed into the world of God? Since God tells us that according to our faith will it be done, this year must be the year when we can have this kind of faith. When examining what we can do and what God can do in John chapter 6, we can confirm that there is, in fact, nothing that we ourselves can accomplish. Let us turn to the book of Exodus chapter 16. Exodus chapter 16 verse 4. Let's take a look at the miracle of the manna. Let us take a look at chapter 16, verse 4. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. Here we can see that there was not just a history of God feeding 5,000 people with five barley loaves and two fish. What did God do from heaven? He rained down manna directly. Our God is not a God who can carry out His work only when there is an intermediary tool. In the desert, what did he do from heaven, even without any tools, such as the five barley loaves and two fish? He sent down manna immediately. Let us contemplate this matter through this scene. After the first month of their 40-year journey in the desert, the Israelites ran out of food, which they had brought with them. They had no food. When they looked ahead, they could see only a barren field where there was no grass. Thus, they were frustrated. In their sight, Canaan, where they were supposed to go, did not appear, and the situation before them was hopeless. However, God rained down food, manna, from heaven. We need to think about the bread called manna. At that time, what could they do in that situation? They ran out of food and had nothing left. When they left Egypt, they had to leave with their family in a hurry, so they only brought a month's worth of food. They expected that even if Canaan is too far, a month is enough to reach Canaan. They prepared the food thinking, no matter how slowly we proceed, a month will be more than enough. However, a month passed, but they did not reach Canaan. In such a situation, what could they do? They did not have the power to perform a miracle feeding 5,000 people like Jesus, did they? Everyone, we must know our ability in this age. We need to understand both our own capabilities and the power of God who leads us. What can God do? What can we do? 
In the history of the five loaves of bread and two fish, they ask, how can we feed 5,000 hungry people sitting in empty fields? When the boy said, I have only five barley loaves and two fish, Jesus replied, bring them to me. Since Jesus said, bring them, there is nothing they can do other than bring them. In the desert, there was nothing more they could do. However, who was with them? God was always with them wherever they went. No matter how harsh or lonely the situations were, God was always with us. Since we constantly forget about the existence of God, we keep missing the opportunities to experience His miracles. Everyone, the miracle of the Red Sea was not the only miracle. For 40 years, God gave food to countless people every day who were wandering in the middle of the desert. Could this be accomplished without the almighty power of God? This is our God. Also, in the story of the widow in Zarephath, the more flour she scooped out, the more the flour accumulated. Who can truly perform such a miracle? Above all else, according to Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, what did God do in the beginning? God created the heavens and the earth. Who created the enormous size of the earth that we are living on? God did it. As He spoke just one word, it was created right away. Who has this ability? This is our God, our Father, and our Mother. We must believe in God. When we believe in our strength, our speaking skills, and our talents, we can never witness God's power. Only when we absolutely depend on God can we see His power. There is nothing we can do ourselves. In the miracle of the five loaves of bread and two fish, the disciples said, How can we satisfy so many people? There is nothing we can do about this. The little boy only has five barley loaves and two fish. Other than that, we do not have anything. How can we feed so many people with this until they are full? Everyone, that's right. We are beings with limited ability. However, God, who is always with us, can do anything. God, who is always with us until the end of the age, has the authority to feed us fully and make the bread fill up the 12 baskets and overflow. Like the 10 spies, when they saw the city of Jericho with their own perspective, it seemed impregnable. However, when viewed through the power of God, who was with them, they could devour its inhabitants. Even for the person who said, we will devour them, the physical perspective was the same. Everyone saw and felt the same thing. However, the difference was in acknowledging God's presence and not acknowledging God's presence. In all aspects of our faith, if we forget God, the gospel will fail. We must keep God in mind. As He supports us until the very end of the age, let us offer up prayers a lot. If we depend solely on our own strength, we cannot raise up workers quickly. However, who leads all these things? We must never forget what God said, I am with you always to the very end of the age. We should try to be the church that God is with. God always sets the goal. We just need to follow His lead towards that goal. Isn't this too much for us? We do not need to say that. From this day on, let us change our mindset. 
Who is leading our church? God leads the way. How much can we accomplish? We cannot achieve anything on our own. However, what if God takes the lead? Everything is possible. We must understand that nothing is impossible when God is in control. God told us about the bread in the desert and the five loaves of bread. Then, let us see what God said about the Passover bread in John, chapter 6, verse 48. In verse 48, it says, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet what happened to them? They died. God sent your ancestors the bread to eat in the desert, but didn't they die even though they ate it? Let us take a look at verse 27. Let's see verse 27. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life. Here, Jesus spoke of the food that spoils, referring to the miracle of the five loaves of bread and two fish in John chapter 6. He later concluded that the five loaves of bread are food that spoils. And what did he say about the miraculous bread in the desert? He said that they died even though they ate it. However, Jesus described the Passover bread differently. Let us see how he expressed it in chapter 6, verse 49 again. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no. What do you not have? Life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has. What do you have? Eternal life. There are five loaves of bread with two fish and the bread called manna. But God did not describe the Passover bread as food that spoils or you will die even though you eat it. What did he say about this bread? God said this bread gives eternal life. Why only does that bread give eternal life? It is because the reality of this bread is Jesus Christ. Which feast was established with this meaning? It was the Passover. Let us turn to the book of Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, verse 17. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Let us move on to verse 26 for the scene of the Passover. The Passover is being kept. Let's see verse 26. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is, what is this? My body. Giving the Passover bread, God bestowed meaning upon it as the body of Christ, his flesh. Let's see verse 27. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Bread and wine. The Passover bread and wine represent the flesh and blood of the Son of Man, whom Jesus spoke of in John chapter 6. What did he promise to those who eat and drink his flesh and blood? He promised to give us eternal life. Likewise, there were the miraculous bread of five loaves and the miraculous bread called manna. But the bread that God acknowledges as the true bread is the Passover bread. Who is the reality of this bread? 
The reality of this bread is Christ. For us to become one with Christ and enjoy eternal life and blessings in the eternal kingdom of heaven, God has granted us the Passover. Many people in the world want to witness a miracle. But Father said, there is no miracle greater than the miracle of eternal life. Everyone, didn't you watch the video where he emphasized the Passover? Indeed, there is no miracle as significant as the Passover. Hoping that all the children of Zion around the world will be able to give God great joy and glory by guiding the sheep that have not yet entered Zion, I would like to conclude this sermon. Thank you very much.